Good evening guys, um, welcome to tonight's Hangout in the Crib. As you can see, I'm joined by the lovely Pain Train and the BP Prof um, and myself first as well. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about the upcoming event, uh, The Last Stand. Uh, so this should be the last of the Reavers, we're hoping. At least for a little while. Um, Eastern Raids. Yeah. So um, we'll start talking about it, I suppose. All right. Should we get right into the slides? Just as well. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to start with uh, bug fixes and changes. Uh, there were a lot of bug fixes. Um, some were just display stuff. Uh, I think this one's been around a while where the range displayed for a ship with UAVs would be displayed incorrectly. So you'd think it was longer, even though it was really, there's no specials that affect UAV range. Um, corrected a case where the officer selection dropped down into overlapping text. I never saw that. Um, and then there's a couple that, uh, I, I highlight these red when they affect how you play. Um, made improvements that should help prevent a case where a player might not see their friends listed in the relocation window. I know that one crops up every once in a while. People can't relocate to somebody they want to relocate to. Um, this next one, uh, rocket build time is fixed. Uh, when they introduced the new rockets, they uh, took away the effect of alliance boosts and rocket scientists on the build time, even though it was shown it, um, that it would be that shorter time. Uh, then when you started the rocket, it would still be the unmodified time, eight hours for an XL rocket or six for a large or whatever the shorter ones were. So um, now those are supposed to work again. I haven't tried it yet. They must owe me about 13 or 14 rockets, by now. <laughs> I finished. I filled my inventory recently and I haven't coined any, so I'll start deleting small ones and building more big ones. Um, I've got 30 um, XL daisy cutters and I've got yeah 13 of those and 12 um, large long pinches, extra large long pinches. Yeah, I mean I built some, well I haven't finished the daisy cutter, the only XL I finished yet was the long pinch. So I built some of those and then I built a bunch of medium quick pinches just because they're quick builds. And then a couple depth charges and whatnot. So anyway, um, let's see. Right, rocket icons will now properly load in the battle log. I know we've all seen the broken link for a while now. And then there are a bunch of fixes on the statistics, and I think some of those came up um, when we were looking at the stats on the Borbus. Um, so the weapon stats, the overload effect appear as stats for the hull itself. I think that, that Borbus overload block just looked a little jacked. Um, again, we'll see it, and I guess hopefully we'll see it fixed when the raid starts. Uh, ensured the unreactive stat shows up correctly in all places it should be displayed. Again, that was something we noticed with the new prizes. It just said unreactive, but it didn't say what the reduced time was. Hopefully they'll tell us what the reduced time is on those new uh, hulls. And then some other stats were in the wrong place. Um, and then flagship effects were back in the dock tooltip. So yay. Um, and then this last one was interesting. Sounds like a little uh, bug that we didn't or I didn't know about that uh, when base relocation was disabled, you could still relocate through the alliance menu. Well, guess what? You can't do that anymore because you're not supposed to. <laughs> Wasn't there a problem last raid? People relocating before it reset? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think there was wasn't there? some issues with um, people relocating and then not being able to claim prizes in sector stores and stuff. Oh. Whoops. Well, so if you're right for being naughty. Um, all right, and then this change I slapped on a different screen because this is kind of a big deal. Um, I know one of the biggest things that people were upset about the new um, 
Cruz is that the salty dogs got moved to rare, which you had a basically a snowball's chance in hell of getting without spending real coin. Um, so now the old common crew with the double XP has been moved to uncommon. So it's still uncommon, um, but they're at least gettable with a reasonable amount of uranium. Um, I guess people's definition of what's a reasonable amount of uranium is different um, depending on how thing, easy. One thing just I've picked up on that, Larry. Uh, are they actually the same? Because then favored ships, uh, the reload and turn speed, that's different is it, than it was before. Um, well, it's, uh, I, I didn't put the other crew on here um, because they both had the same uh, stats for favored ship. So I, I thought that was the same as before the um, rogue crew change. You carry on talking. I've got a picture of an older one in my library. I'll have a look and find out. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they, they are um, both the same except for the 2 XP and the 3 XP. You've got the rare crew that now gives triple XP. So um, that's nice, but, again, it's it's a little bit costly to get those rare crews. So use them wisely if you get them. Should I carry on, Rob, or are you almost uh, at your library? Uh, carry on. I'm looking for it at the moment. I'll just throw it in later. Okay. All right, so uh, let's move on to the raid. Last stand. Um, in general, the structure is the same. You've got the world map targets. You've got the campaigns. Um, I haven't seen specifics on the points. And the um, well, I did see the levels, and those were the same. Um, and they and they will again have those restrictions removed, so you can hit any campaign. But um, I assume the point nerfs. So if you're a level 60 plus and you hit the uh, strike campaign, you're not going to get as many bonus points as you would um, a sub-level 60 player would. So you've got that. You've got world map targets with the new level 95 Reaver Nav Complex. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, it is a six-day raid. It is a hall store. It has the same sort of unlockable sector bar. And um, you get the uranium bonus at various point thresholds, but I think it's been reduced, although I saw somewhere else someone said it was the same. But I know the top bonus was 5,000, and I thought it used to be 10,000. Uh, I think it was 5,000. Always? Yeah, all right. So maybe not reduced. It's, I'm not sure if it wasn't 10,000 total. Okay. 5,000 being the top one, but I, again, I don't know. I don't really pay that much attention to it because I'm, no, I know that I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit loads of um, river salt platforms, so um, I know that I don't really bother having a look at the uranium bonus that I get from it. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's so low, and Kickside justified it by saying you use it to buy road crews during the event. Well, now 5,000 uranium isn't going to get you very far for road crews, so... So it's like about five, five rolls, six rolls. <laughs> yep, that's correct. <laughs> Not many. Um, yeah, okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, Rob just let us know that the Salty Dogs is the same bonuses, so... Uh, okay, so um, we got links for the briefing and the prize list and the tips. Um, video we have not seen yet. It'll be interesting, I'm sure. I wonder who's going to do the video. Rest in peace, Swag. That will also be interesting. I want Will to do it. I, think I want cool. Will to do it, too. I reckon yeah. he'd do a really it good would, video. It would be good. I seriously <laughs> doubt that it's going to happen. There's a but... suggestion for next raid. Yeah. Yes. I we strongly want, endorse that Will suggestion. To, we want Will to do the video for the raid. Dressed as a unicorn. With his big black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From those of you that have watched the recruitment advert that they've done. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, it's good to put a bit of context into that, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for those of you that haven't seen it, watch it and you'll be enlightened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on from big back black dildos, um, sector influence. Um, so sector influence, this is uh, basically the same. Uh, the bonuses at the various percentage levels are the same. Um, remember the point multipliers that you get uh, later on in the <laughs> in the in the sector bar don't affect your campaign bonuses. Um, I got the sector points earned. Uh, again, you've got that same reduced set of sector targets as last time, um, with the exception you've got the new Reaver Nav complex, which is good. Which is good. Two thousand five hundred makes it a lot easier than grinding out sixty five. So I know mean, last time it was, you know, but especially my alliance got fed up. Of hitting 65s to get the sector bar open. You know, we had like um, a 1.7 million target and 600 points per 65. I mean, it was alright because we were tag teaming it, but you know, it just gets monotonous and boring. It is a lot of targets. What is that? 600? So, what? 600,000 points is 1,000 targets? Yeah. That's like 3,000 targets. That's a lot of targets. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't too bad because we were doing the tag team on the video. That, um, um, I've yeah, got some kind of breaking news about the raid. Uh, there's been a forum post. Attention, there will not be an accompanying video for this event. Thank you for your understanding. <laughs> well, I'm guessing Will there's should not, make not one. one person in the office who could have made the video. Swag I think Will should person. make a video apology. Yeah. I'm sorry there is no raid video. Definitely. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not giving them any coin unless I get a video. I want to uh, see, for... see what I'm buying. Yeah. Is it, it's not unreasonable. You know, Swag took all that difficult video-making technology with him, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, but to be fair, Kickstarter could have watched our um, Rob Carmody's extra special tech segment on how to make videos for noobs. I'll make a video just for him. Earth, how to make you, a radio. Know, you know Kickstarter doesn't take suggestions from the community. Well, Come on. <laughs> they okay. do, they just twist it. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Larry, did all you right, mention uh, the let's... points? Sorry, Rob? You said about the 2,500 sector points. Did you mention the event points as well? On the... Uh, 500k. I'll get to it on the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 500,000 event points, just to break the suspense. Oh, and the 65s pay out 600 <laughs> uranium, just in case. I think we're killing Larry's slides here. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. He, this it's on this slide. He was trying. He was trying to move on, and it's it's on there, and he's not read it out. Look, terrible. thank you. Yes, you're you're correct, Earth. and that is the same as last time. All right, <sighs> moving on. Forsaken Rescue. Um, this is sort of the same as last time, but the points. Whoop. Sorry, guys. Um, the point threshold has gone down a lot. It used to be 800 points, now it's 80 points. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I didn't quite do the math, but that might mean... Yeah, doing one siege campaign should earn you an elite mercenaries crew if you rescue all the ships in that campaign. Um, so, again, there's a shroud building that uh, sort of keeps those Forsaken ships captive. Once you kill that shroud building, the Forsaken ships start running away. Um, last time it was at a quite slow speed. They were slow ships. Um, last time, the ones that were marked with the marker that says that that's the shroud building, 
Um, I noticed that it wasn't that building at all. It was a completely different one. In some no. of I never ran into that problem. Oh, um, I did. It was one that was on completely the other side of the bloody base. Oh, that's course, weird. I oh, know. It's obviously a graphic error, but... Yeah. Um, it, was, so they did... it was quite amusing when I was going, it should be gone. Why is it not gone? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, okay, and so they did make one improvement here. Um, so last time, one of the most frustrating things about trying to do this rescue was that there were priority targets, but you didn't know what they were. So when you're in a target and you kill all the priority targets, the um, battle ends and you win. Um, but what that meant was that you wouldn't get rescue points for the ships that hadn't escaped. Um, so now those priority targets are marked. You'll be able to see them with the uh, reaver symbol and you'll also see them on the mini-map with the yellow dots. So that's a, that's a nice improvement along with uh, making that uh, uh, rogue crew actually reachable in n now one just one campaign um, is really nice. I mean, I th I'm not sure, I mean, did any of, any of us get it? No. No, I, I did a run of each campaign. I had nowhere near enough points uh, to get a crew, so... You know, I don't think it was worth it really last time. No, no it, was, it, it just took so long because those ships were so slow. So let's. I I hope the ships move at a reasonable speed this time. Is is what needs to happen. Rockets up the backsides, please, Will. Whilst we're on a will day today. What? The hell are Rockets you up the what? Rockets up the back side of the ships, make them move quicker. Oh, yeah, there's really slow uh, escape in the screen, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Um, all right, so we'll, we'll just have to see how that goes once the um, campaign starts. Well, um, that could be worthwhile to do if um, if you're one that's going to hit the map targets for the sector points and the, you know, the 95 nav complex. If you could do, if you're willing to sit and do them like, repeatedly over and over... It might be worthwhile for repairs to do one run of siege campaign and use your road crew to do it. Yeah, yeah. Or if if you can, I mean, you'll have to rescue most of the ships in the siege campaign to to get the crew in in one run. But you know, if you can, right, then you earn a crew from the first siege campaign, and then hopefully you can use that road crew in the next run of the siege campaign. Be another nice way to do it. Yeah, it would be smart. <clears throat> Although I think you'd probably want to save them up because it's quite a powerful road crew, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you could save them. I've got two grease monkeys saved. I'm quite pleased. <laughs> um, e Ewok had seven at one point. Oh my gosh. I, I wanted to kill him. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on from the rescue. So we've got reverse assault platforms again. Um, so co-op target, single hit, no retreat. The uh, description of this says new, larger, more dangerous. So um, you've got that. Other than that, it's it. The description is the same. Uh, chance to win a um, Hellstar Proto Nemesis. You have to do five percent damage to get a chance um, and they've continued the respawn mechanic so that's all the same I'm not sure there's much more to say about this not really I don't think yep. alrighty the Reaver Nav Complex and um, I apologize I missed the tips and tricks post until real recently so I don't have more pictures um, so um, anyway, again, this is a solo target, and although you can retreat, if you retreat, it will reset. So you, you need to do it in one hit if you want to beat it. Um, it is a 20-minute time limit. You get 2,500 sector points and 500,000 event points for beating this target. There is a resource but no uranium payout for beating this target. 
Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll just describe it. Um, when you come into this target, you have two allied fleets. You get Zoe, a fleet of Zoe Stingrays, and you get a fleet of Harlock's Atlases. Um, if both captain's ships sink, the battle is lost. So um, although those are capable offensive fleets that are going to be your allies, you can't just let them totally get burned up or um, you will lose. So um, you hit these, try and beat them. Um, I think you can expect some shrouds that you're going to have to deal with. And uh, I think there is a hell star that you will see in this target. So um, we expect it to be quite challenging, even with your allied fleets. Yep. Anything else you want to say, Rob? Earth? Um, I don't know. I think you pretty much covered the basics uh, without repeating it. Did you, did you mention it's only a single player? You can't co-op, and it does reset if you die. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, yeah, solo target. It looks fun though. It looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the last one, the what, the Hellstar Nexus. That was the yeah. last one of these. I mean, those were doable with with a Frosty Crusader. Um, so I guess I guess we'll have to see, right? I mean, if if it's a single hit target, then obviously there must be a fleet out there that can beat these. So we'll we'll just have to see how it goes. I just popped up on the screen. Uh, I've picked up the, um, the forum post just so you can have a little look at that. Yeah. So, uh, start spawning down the bottom. Um, obviously you've got your Zoe Stingrays and your Harlock's Atlas is there. You've got your fleet coming in, so... I mean, to be honest, it looks to me like, obviously, the ballistics are probably going to work better than the atlases at killing the turrets, I would have thought. Yeah, but, the, the atlases have scarabs on them. Yeah, I did see that from the photo, actually. Yeah. Well, if you look closely, you can see the scarabs, uh, full scarabs on the, on the atlases. And the Stingrays have two uh, Arbalests and five Shredder Cannons, it looks like. Yeah, it does look like that. Okay. So, so probably then it sounds like a good strategy to support those um, carriers, which aren't going to kill the turrets very quickly at the beginning, right? And yeah. then the ships I, maybe want to do that. So. I mean, if you think about... I mean, what's it? They they both kind of uh, they have, they have a group. And looking on that picture, it looks like the Harlocks have taken the one on the left, and the Stingrays have taken the one on the right. Um, just based on what we know about the you know the Arbalest and the and the Scarabs, I'd definitely say go and support the Harlocks. They'd probably have a harder time killing those turrets. Yeah. Yeah. Plus they've got um, you know with with the Arbalests, you know they're going to tear through stuff. Pretty quick, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. A, a good idea. A good idea. Um, you know, I'm just looking on that picture. There's quite a bit of napalm. I know a lot of, well, not loads of people, but many people have uh, like a frosty crusader slash Aegis fleet. Um, you could even separate and have, you know, one frosty, one crusader go one side, um, one Aegis, one crusader the other, just to provide some backup fire, and then you're extinguishing the napalm on both sides as well. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a really good idea, I think. <clears throat> All but right. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty mean, just to sat there in the back. Big, big red Rudolph nose on it. <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nose Hellstar? Something like that, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah. But yeah, it looks a fun target, for sure. Um, you know, it's and it's going to be a lot better than grinding out the 65s at 600 points. Go. It it looks like a fast target as well. It doesn't look like it's it, like it's too big, and it don't. I don't imagine you'd be spending very long hitting it if you've got a decent fleet. No. I mean, they give you 20 minutes to hit it, but 
I don't think I can't imagine looking at that. I can't imagine that taking twenty minutes at all. Even I ten, sh- yeah. I no, it's between so. five and ten. I think most of it's going to be driving from the south platforms to the big one at the top. It looks like. Yeah, small travel time than anything else. I would have thought. Really. Yeah, I think. Well, you kill the ships on the way. That's another point as well. You might want to consider using uh, something that can kill those those ships because those ships will probably charge towards the Forsaken allies. Yeah, if you're using anything else other than Crusaders ballistic wise, so I would put some, you know, uh, some of the slow down cannons on there. Yeah, or UAVs with the with the pinch UAV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're gonna get that little bit of help from Harlock fleet as well, aren't you? Yeah, and and I know a lot of people have coined the Valkyries, so if you're one of those, you could probably try your Valkyries out. Mm. Yeah, I think probably be pretty good for this. What I thought. Yeah. Especially when you get to the Hellstar, actually. If you can, if you get a pinch on the Hellstar, that would be really nice. For sure. Because <laughs> no doubt it's got lots of throws and lots of napalm on it. Yeah. All fire of death. People in chat are reminding us we've missed out to talk about the ships that get warped in while, as you're hitting it. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I can't remember reading that, but someone's, two people have said... Uh, the ship ships get warped in. Yeah, during the battle, <clears throat> the Reaver Nav relay will be summoning Reaver ships to attack your forces. Um, protect Harlock and Zoe while their fleets take on the initial power cores. Blah blah blah. Okay. So you got that working against you. You're gonna want something that's pretty good in there. Yeah. I'd have said, you know, an ideal fleet would be, like Rob said, Frosty Crusader, Aegis Mix would be pretty awesome in now, I should have thought. You know, um, if you're going to use it. Sorry, carry sorry. On. I was going to say, if you're going to use SCXs, um, obviously the cannons aren't quite as quick firing, so you're going to miss a bit more, so you probably want to get some disruptor cannons on there as well. I think. Um... I know a lot of people have built weight tactical modules. I've seen a lot more of them out now. Um, if you can drop one ship and get that in, I think that's going to be useful to, you know, to jump between Zoe and Harlock, depending on who's in need of aid. If if that is the case, um, and also if you're allied, as, the stuff. if you're allied as well, that works for for your allies as well. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of um, interesting fleets with the Monarch. Um, one that I saw only last night when I was playing just in Fleet Beefly on the map. Uh, obviously, it's a bit late to build it for the raid unless you want to coin it. But it's a good general idea for a Fleet Beefly. Fleet. It was uh, a Frostburn, a Aegis, uh, a Monarch Quake tactical module, and two Fusion Cruisers filled with launchers. Mm-hmm. And that was just... It was killing everything, you know. You had the uh, cryo depth charges on the on the thermal ships, the kill subs. Um, obviously, the the uh, launchers killed everything above water. Um, I think they, I think they had some hails on the Aegis as well to shoot down a few UAVs in case they fired. It was a really good mixed up fleet. Yeah, I'm doing mm-hmm. I'm doing the wake uh, monarch at the moment. I got a build in the shipyard to you to utilize my fleets. Yeah, I'm building one to run with and forces as a base hitter. Hey, I might want to go, to go my fusion through a base hitter as well, but it can fit into a lot of fleets. Like. You laugh, Larry, but it's going to be awesome. I'm going to take a, I'll make a <laughs> video and post it of smashing your base up with it. I'm sure Rob was on about doing a similar sort of thing. <sighs> Anytime, Earth. <laughs> it sounds cool. I just, uh, you know, it's it's uh, creative. That's great. I don't know. I know. Um, I'm going to be building rhinos really soon. I'll gi- I'll give that sneak preview. Um, that's what I expect to be building very soon. So. Them things look. Them things look awesome. I'll be building man with my tokens. The one I'm building is only seven days a ship. Hmm. All right. That arm, I think. Let's uh, let's move on. What do we got? Uh, we got prizes. So um, we'll start with Borba's. Borbus's. I I put the apostrophe in the wrong place. Uh, oh. Borbus Gore Saber. So, um, 
the long-awaited flagship uh, for the Core Saber has arrived. 40 million points, which is quite a lot. Um, and I, I didn't put it side by side with the Gore Staber sats uh, yet, but um, it looks somewhat improved, although not vastly improved, just in terms of its stats. Um, you know, it's got more reload, but it's pretty easy to max out the reload anyway um, if you're using Dragon Fires. Um, it does have that 10% evade, which I think a uh, regular Gore Saber is zero. It's got the 20% um, turret defense. And I did notice that um, if you look, you see this shows 20%, not plus 20%. So this is the turret defense that will not stack with um, siege battery. So if you put on siege battery, it's not the 40% and the 20%. It's just 40%. So maybe not totally worthless, but you're not going to get that stack. Yeah, so just in case people um, still don't understand how it works, um, if, <clears throat> if it's going to be unstackable, you get the highest of the two figures. So, for example, on the Hellstar, uh, sorry, on the Hellhound, it's got the built-in 30%, um, and you add the, the Siege battery, and then... Um, and that takes it up to 40. It's always the higher number out of the two. Yep. But it's a lot of wasted weight. To be fair, that saves a special, to be honest. That's 20% of the Detroit defense is quite nice. It is nice, yeah. Yeah. That so half against your, uh, your executioners and your mortars. It's your pyros that that's going to help you a lot with as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the rockets don't outrange the uh, pyro. Um, but the big deal here is this uh, overload that uh, has people uh, uh, interested. And um, so you've got this overload effect that has a listed range of 1,000. What does that mean? Um, that means it's going to stun everything on the map for five seconds. Okay. Now, you can reduce that with shielded electronics or some of those other um, stun defense specials, but um, when this thing takes 5,800 points of damage, it will stun everything on the map, period. So, um, that's kind of exciting. Yeah? Um, yes, interesting. <laughs> um, it, it does a bit of damage might be good in base defense, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I thought about that. I mean, you know, you can only win one, so if you, if you build it for base defense, you can't use it in offense. Um, but yeah, it would be quite good in base defense because um, stunning attackers means they'll be pretty vulnerable to things like mortars. Not just that, you, you stun their fleet, I don't know. Nine times out of ten, their fleet is going to have pinch distance. Because nine times out of ten, you'll have something give like siege battery or no, a lot of radio people, uh, over pinch. A lot of people use agility system. Yeah, agreed. But uh, you tend to find that <clears throat> since you've got the um, frosties come out. Yeah, that's a good point. You, uh, look, a lot of people that aren't. So they'd be yeah. in the full five seconds. And if you place it so they get stunned, or they, you know, say you enforce it, for example, you force firing, and then they hit that first, that shit first, that stuns them, that gives the enforcers five seconds of free damage. But don't forget, if you use this in base defense, you're losing your limit, your flagship, so you can't use a wrath or anything. I know a lot of people use wraths, and they also pinch if you get close. And the yeah, too, the, the, range, the range difference. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, I mean, you stun everything on the map, but if you're using it in defense, you have to be close enough to fire at it anyway, or the, the attacker has to be close enough to fire at it anyway. So yeah. so the range isn't that amazing So you're, you're probably better defense. using the Wrath then for your three times salver as well. And also if you've got Mastodons in your base, the, the Wrath helps to reload on those, doesn't it? Sure does. It does, yeah. But, you know, it's just another idea for um, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I thought this would be a nice spotter for mastodons or, or rhinos. Um, I mean, right? It's just, it's just you get, you have that uh, stun, and I think this is going to be a useful ship, even if you're not pairing it with a rocket fleet. This would be a real flexible flagship. That's the range being confirmed is why it's not going to change before it comes out. That is correct. The range is is displayed as intended. I'm going to call it. <laughs> yeah. So it's not going to be changed on when it comes out. No, that thousand. It, it looks scary, and people think it's a typo, but it is completely intended. They've said. Yep. Yeah, it's going to make it very interesting. It's, it's all I can say. I don't find the other to be there either, considering. Yeah. Eight days for Reaper ship, it's not that bad. I'm not yeah. liking Larry's idea though. I'm just thinking about what you said, Larry, about the Mastodons. Rhinos. <laughs> Rhinos, Mastodons, yeah. yeah. Drop one of them new launches on it for 91 range. Yeah, yeah, just drop one launcher on it and then you're all set for the spotting and, um, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's a cool idea. All right. Uh, next, just confirm a few things about the. Um, I think we've pretty much gone over it, but a lot of people are a bit iffy about what the overload actually does. Um, it is a little bit confusing, I suppose. Um, obviously, we've said it. It will pinch the whole base, so that's something to consider. It's not a typo or anything. Um, and with regards to the to that splash and stuff, that's not a rocket related. So the overload isn't. It doesn't give stats for the rocket, it gives stats for the EMP blast. So that's not going to give you rocket splash or rocket range or anything like that. It's only for the EMP. I should hope not. 200, 200 rocket splash would be slightly excessive. Yeah. I mean, so, the splash, so, so the splash affects the radioactive damage, that 2,000 radioactive damage from Correct. the uh, EMP. Yeah. That has a 200 splash that's right. stat. Okay. Another thing that um, that I was thinking about this, um, it, if you think about obviously in base in uh, hitting bases, you're going to pinch the whole base. Uh, it, using it in raid targets, you know, in future raids, uh, you're going to pinch everything. And we don't know what the new raids are going to be yet. yet. Uh, they might have some long range turrets that are going to be harming you, which you kind of have to kill short range ships and stuff first. So. That could help a lot in future raids, uh, fleet v fleet as well, pinching a whole fleet without say. having to use a rocket. Um, all these things uh, help, so I, I would think outside the box with this shit. Arm, arm to the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It holds, I, you know, it holds a lot of weight. I mean, 13,000. You could do a lot. If you were building that blank just for its effect, you could put a lot of armor on that. Yeah, you could... You could Throw a whole lot of reaver bulkhead on it. I I. I don't got full reaver bulkhead, but because you've got the armor, because you've got the the thirty nine percent armor abilities, you could put. You could probably get away with free bulkhead. Maybe. Does it, does it get repair mod? Because you've got, you got seven armor slots, you can get away with free bulkhead, and then, you know, your D five or something. Yeah. Yeah. I. I yeah. It's it's tough. I mean, fifty eight hundred armor points is a lot of um. Damage. So, you know, right when you're talking twenty-five thousand armor points, that's only four overloads. So, I, you know, I understand where you're going with that, Scotty. It's just, it's just tough to give up the resistances. Well, you'd be get with free, with uh, free bulkhead and four D five B. With nothing else, no special. Anything, you get fifty-six percent of aid and thirty-eight thousand two hundred armor points. Okay, so that's five overloads. It's not bad. Yeah, that's another slightly positive. If people are worried about the overload, just you know, constantly pinching the base, it, it's not as uh, frequent as previous overloads that we're used to, which is which is good. Uh, yeah. Another thing I want to point out: someone on chat just posted uh, said, according to Doom Rooster, anything underwater will not be affected, including mines. Ooh. So, which is good because you wouldn't want it to pinch everything, like subs and everything. But, Kind of makes sense, I suppose. I'd want to pinch subs. <laughs> well, I'd want to, but if I was using subs, I wouldn't want to get pinched. <laughs> double edged yeah, really, is Um. Yeah. 
you really wanted to, you could use the new missile on SFB3. Be smart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Which new missile be, with SFB. Yeah, sure. it gives you 98 range still. Yep. Yep. So that um, so if you was to put it in your base armored up with SFB3 and one of the new missiles, that's your spot for warbirds coming. Matches yeah, the yeah. range. Should we move okay. on? Uh, let's move on from Borbus. Yes, Borbus. Borbus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not even too bothered about that one. You know, this rhino is what I'm looking towards. Yeah, so the rhino is a missile throwing beast. 15 weapon slots and 10,000 tons of weight to use on those weapon slots. Um. If we didn't have a new missile coming out, it would be really nice with Strike B, but but we'll get to the new missile. Um, five special reload. slots. Sorry, Scotty? That base reload is insane. Yep, yeah, 140% reload bonus. 20% um, damage bonus, which certainly doesn't hurt. Um, and then you've got remote targeting as well. So, um, Which is interesting. Yeah. You know... On these slides, you know, I try to highlight the best uh, capabilities of each ship in green. You'll notice that I highlighted just about the entire stat block. Okay, um, it's got good defenses for a, a ship that's got remote targeting, um, right? Evade bonus, forty percent, fifty percent, thirty percent. It's got sixteen combat speed, which is really fast. Um, the only thing I didn't highlight was the turn speed. That's not so good, but that takes it. That takes it to twenty. With no retros, that takes it to a twenty. New twenty-five combat. Well, it does take twenty-five combat speed with no retros. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, so you can think so about fully retro and mortars are going to outrun it. Yeah, you can have twenty-five combat to outrun mortars. Yeah, um, I put this in yellow because, I mean, I. <laughs> On a ship like this, right, you, you almost don't expect sonar and thermal, but it's got it. Now, the range isn't very good for thermal, 50. Um, right, subs can, can certainly exploit that. You know what that's good for, I think, mines? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. 60 range, 60 sonar range is going to be great, so this thing's going to pick off mines. But you say that about the, I mean, if you, a lot of people, I mean, especially being in the, uh, the, the right now, a lot of people will run an Aegis or a Frosty with them anyway, so the so the sonar for say if you get your boy sub isn't going to be an issue. Yeah. Later on. Yep. Have you done a Have you done an image component to the proto mast by any chance? I, I have not done that yet. I'm gonna um, I'm working on my blog post and um, so I, I refer it more towards the uh, Kodia. No, I think Mastodon because it's remote target. I mean, if you look at, uh, let me just zoom in. I've got screen share on. I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's a bit bigger on the, on the game. Uh, you, you see the Proto Mastodon stats. So uh, everything's just a little bit better. So the armor points, or well, actually the armor points are a lot better. So you know, almost three and a half thousand more base armor. Uh, it lacks in weight. It's got a little, you know, almost about two thousand tons less in weight, so you can fit more heavier missiles on the proton mast. Uh, but obviously we'll talk about the new missile. Gets an extra 10% reload. Um, I notice it doesn't have any uh, flak of it, does it? The Rhino. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about that, and that's a really interesting uh, weakness, because the new missile doesn't have any flak of aid either. Hmm, but it has more accuracy, so... And it has the, obviously the built-in the built bypass as well. Um, yeah. I mean, well, even all the defensive stats as well, they're the same pretty much, but radiation is 50 compared to 40 on the proton mast, and explosive is 40 compared to 30. Ballistic and penetrative are still 30 and 40, respectively. I think, obviously, the combat speed is, is insane com in, in comparison. Fifth, yeah. Is it 16? Yeah, yeah 16 yes. compared to 11. Left Turn up. speed's better on the proton mast, but, you know, that's neither here nor there, really, is it? Um, mm. Obviously, more weapons, same armor, an extra special. Cargo is irrelevant, um, and I think the uh, the unreactive trait uh, 
and then you've got the random cryo missiles on the pro mast. I'm not sure you can really react to it really. Unreactive is when you, uh, I think the best way to describe it is the launchers don't stack forever, so they'll soon dissipate like a V2H. Yeah. Even with, even with an enforcer fire. Where's Tyler? I want to give some stick. I told him this would kill you for easier. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't, you can't really compare the unreactive to the cryo missiles. I don't think the, you know, unreactive is not really useful unless you're going into a base as a attacker ship. If, if you're using it as a mastodon. I don't think you're going to really come into the use of the unreactive. I think the only thing that I can see that's really downside to it is is it's only 50% uh, remote targeting on it, isn't it? Isn't the Mastodon 70 or 75? 75, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking that you know it's going to have to be closer to your lead ship and you know there's more chance of it getting splashed by um, morts, possibly. Yeah, but it is faster, so in and that... if it was going to be used, say if it was going to be using it for the same way you use your Mastodon, for example, to snipe and stuff, you know, yeah. less sniping ability. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, th I don't think this is going to completely kill the Pro Mast. I'm not going to rush out there and, and refit and, you know, change my Pro Mast. I'm still going to use them as I do. I might build a, a fleet with these as well, you know, for different types of bases, but... I'm certainly not going to forget these. Let's not forget how good this ship looks as well. This Rhino looks disgusting. It looks like a butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was I think that was the Warbird carriers. No, this one. I don't know. They've both got similar characteristics in that sense. They both have butt plug characteristics. <laughs> but I mean, I, I want to touch on the build time as well. The difference between the build time. Um, I, I made um, a fleet. I put it on the Battle Pirates crib. Uh, what I'm gonna, what I was going to build to hit 85 strongholds. It was an Enforcer, a Jug X, Savage flagship, and two Proto Masts. Now, the good thing about them was it was just under 14 days per Proto Mast. Now, with the, I've made a build for the Rhino with the new weapon, and it's about seven days a ship, so half the speed. So I'm, you know, I'm tempted to forget my Proto Mast idea and go with the Rhinos now. The mission. Yeah, yeah. The build time is astounding. Two and a half days with an officer um, for the hull. You know, most most hulls are five Pro, days or more. Proto mast is five hour, five days, sixteen hours, I believe. Yeah. Well, I just want to congratulate Kicksai on actually listening to the fact that we want ships with the low build time. Um. Yeah. We 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 definitely want to bring this up on the show. Um. Right. Because you've got this this hull with the two and a half day build time. The Artemis from the Fat had a three-day build time, when it's really better than the V2H, which has a five-day uh, hull build time. Then um, I think before that you had the Valkyrie carrier come out with a five-day build time, but the Valkyrie was a lot better than let's say the Warbird, which also had a five-day build time. So it, it seems like. Um, they're starting to reduce build times on new equipment. And yeah, I like that. I, yeah. I like the idea that, you know, as, as a kind of balance, that, that Gorsuba, the uh, Borbosusus Gorsuba, isn't three <laughs> days or something either. I think I'm, I'm happy that Limited Ship is, you know, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can, well, I am always say I'm happy, but I can live with um, having, like, a Limited Ship being a week or, you know, seven or eight days. As long as the non-Limited Ships are lower, like two or three, it kind of balances out. I think overall, it will make it quicker. With the new weapons, hopefully not taking a day or two days per weapon as well. That's right. That's and right. Specials yeah, can... that take two and a half days, like resonance battery, fusion charges, uh, even gorse and agility system, heavy play, and they all take ages. Two days. Mm -hmm. I think my my biggest thing with um, with refitting ships and refitting up is refitting armors, and the time it takes to refit armor. Oh God, yeah. That, yeah, armor um, hasn't come down. Um, I mean, we did see the the uh, the D ninety eight Antipode launcher, right? That was a fifteen hour build per launcher, which um, was the same as the old U launchers and the same as the Cryo N. So again, a much more powerful weapon for the same build time. Um, so maybe yeah. we're seeing a little bit of another thing. Someone's just pointed out. You know how I was saying how this. Obviously, has a, a lot better armor points, um, you know, at 7991 compared to, I think it was 5,000 something on the Proto Mast. 
Someone said uh, they'd like to mention that base armor on the new ships is skyrocketing, so the minimum repair time is greater, which means more repair. But fair enough. You could you could navigate around that. I think that actually works in your favor. So uh, the way I'm going to kind of try and put it into layman's terms is, if you wanted to build a ship and your target was to make that ship, you know, have about twenty-two thousand armor, for example, the the more base armor it has, the less armor you need to put on it, so you can put lighter armors on, uh, making the ship quicker to build and quicker to repair, um, but maintaining the same number of armor points, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, quicker to build, not quicker to repair. The of course, base, yeah. The yeah, base, base armor is the same. Yeah, quicker yeah. to build, uh, which would help you overall in the long run. So That could actually be a good thing, having more built-in armor, because then you can kind of micromanage your D2s and D3 armors a bit better as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, you guys are talking about using this as a remote targeting ship, uh, using it like a mastodon. I thought, you know, this this ship with its um, five specials and five armor slots, you know, it, it's it's well defended enough, and, and 16 combat speed base, it's well defended enough to be a frontline ship. New Kodiaks. Yeah. Yeah, and a, here's the a, thing, okay? And a Mastodon had a baby and this popped up. <laughs> here's the thing, right? So let's say you're going up against um, new launchers, okay? So instead of stacking up, you spread your ships out, right? And um, when one of them reaches the target, okay, they're all going to fire because that remote targeting, but... Yeah. But only one of them is going to be taking that shockwave instead like that. of your whole stack. And then when the next, and then when the next one comes past, like in a train, when the next one comes past, the uh, they're all still firing away, but the second should be taking the damage. So you could almost say you're making a pain train of rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I, I think I think the pain train formation will be quite an effective way <laughs> to use these the right pain train formation. <laughs> but 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 it, it 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 what I'm trying to say is you know this is a new ship and and it's kind of a this is this is a, a ship that we haven't seen something like it before and I think you're going to want to drive it a little differently than ships we've seen before. I want to add as well um I know most people will understand this, but for the sake of those who put launchers and rockets and morts on mastodons, the remote targeting is for missiles and missiles only, not Hornet UAVs, which you can't fit on the ship anyway, but only missiles. So please don't be putting launchers on expecting it to retarget, or remote target rather. Um, also, can I just further that and say that throwers also don't work on it either. <laughs> I but did have someone who come in to my base with thrower mastodons. Um, <sighs> yeah. See, I've just thought, now you said throwers, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but someone somewhere could, will we'll probably make it, I might even say make a build on Huggies, with 15 weapon slots. You've got enough slots there to, to fit on, maybe not throwers, cryo, cryo depth charges and countermeasures mixed. Countermeasures, in. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking the cryo depth charges uh, for a mix yeah. of killing subs when you get ninja, as well as a little bit of combat speed, so you're out running morts more, because mm -hmm. you've got a lot of weapon slots to play with. Yeah, I mean, 15 weapon slots in a two-day build time, you know, why would you ever build a Triton ever again? You, you have five specials as well. You've got room for countermeasure loaders or countermeasure equipment. Yep. I think this would be a great countermeasure ship. It doesn't have the accuracy bonus, which is too bad, but um, yeah, I think it would be a great countermeasure ship. So there. All right, let's move on to the Rhino, uh, from the Rhino to the Harrier missile. Um, so we've got a missile with uh, longer range than just about anything we've seen before besides the Deluge. Um, and I put it on here. So you've got 95 range with Strike System 3 or 98.8 with uh, Solid Fuel Booster 3. So basically, go Strike System. Well, <laughs> I, 
you know, strike system gives you 95, which is nice, but 99, all of a sudden you're outranging stuff that which you could never outrange before, like UAVs. I wonder if you will use this for sniping. <laughs> oh, I wonder if you will, Rob. <laughs> well, wait for it, when your master done. I wonder if my Hellhound's going to get refitted almost immediately after the raid. <laughs> I've already done in my fact, future. In fact, probably during the raid. Yeah, tokens. Woohoo! Thank you, Kixai, for tokens. Um, okay, so you can see the stats on here. Um, uh, they were posted at 15 rank, which means that there were some retrofits applied. I think these are going to retrofit in the bypass missile category. Yes. Um, so the penetrative bypass without the rank is probably going to be in the 35% range, 40% range. Wait, I can give you an exact number because they have updated the, uh, the forum. Oh, that'd be nice. Um, but while Rob looks for that, I'll just tell you, we've got penetrative bypass, we've got increased accuracy, and we've got a pretty decent build time, uh, four hours. Now, this is a really light missile. It's 200 tons. 40%, so, Larry? Yeah, 40%, so double, double a strike there. 40, okay, yeah, 40 is pretty good. The, the damage goes up as well. No, it doesn't. Forget that. No, it should just, yeah, it should just be the bypass. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, right, so 40% bypass is pretty nice. Um, and then this four-hour build time. So if you compare that to like a strike missile, right? A strike missile B weighs half as much, but it takes three hours to build. Um, and you can see some of that on our next slide. Before we could go to that. So I made the, um, my favorite new chart style, um, where I'm plotting range versus damage per weight, and then the bubble size relates to the build time per weight. So a bigger bubble means that a certain weight takes longer to build. Um, further to the right means it has more range, and further up means it does more damage for a given weight. So um, something that's above and to the right of something else is just better. Okay. So you can see the Harrier missile is just better. Now, it's not off the chart better, but it's better. Um, I don't account for bypass on this chart. Um, this is at 45% rank, but they're all uh, one uh, salvo for most of these missiles we're considering, so um, that's not a big deal. I know a lot of people like to see a legendary. Um, but so, so when you adjust for weight, You've got one and a half times the DPS and a better build time than the Strike B. You can see the, the bubble is smaller on the Harrier. Um, and then you've got just about double the DPS, and for a given weight, you've got longer build time than Siege Z. So, you know, again, if, if you're limited to a certain amount of weight in your fleet, um, Siege Z is going to be your fastest build, but... Um, Harrier is just a great combination of range and build time and DPS. I mean, it, it just looks really, really effective. Um, just something you're going to want to use uh, anywhere you can. Yeah, I mean, it looks really good. It looks really good. It's got so many uses, you know. It's base defense. You know, base defense, base attacking, fleet versus fleet, for raids and stuff, it's going to be good. Yep. Yep. Alright, we uh, ready to move on, talk about some of the other prizes in the whole store? Yes. Yes, because okay. we're running out of time. Did okay. you mention the Rhino's got no retail again? Yeah, I, I put that on the chart, but I didn't say it. So the Rhino's got no retargeting, so one of those five specials is definitely laser. Same as the Mastodon, though. That one has four specials. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, okay, token store. Uh, same as before, but you can buy more tokens. Um, max possible, 11 days, 3 hours, speed up, and that's going to cost you 30.9 million points. Um, I guess we'll 
move on from there unless anybody has anything else they want to say about it. Yay, tokens. Yeah. Okay. Um, I tried to pick out some of the whole store highlights. Um, so you've got this first group, um, tier essentially one and two. Um, the Spectre is available for the first time in a long time. Um, Spectres are a little limited with only two specials, but the hall is only one day to build. And with Magnus Drive, you can do Magnus and Battery and eight assault torpedoes, and it builds in like three or four days. Well, uh, probably five or six days, but um, it's really effective. I still use my Spectres. I've never bothered to build Nighthawks, which I probably should have, but I like building other stuff, so um, I still use my Spectres. I prep 85s with Spectres, um, so I think that's a, a great thing to get if you're... Um, if you don't have a night, Nighthawk fleet or a CUDA fleet. I'd still say try and get... If, you, if you're going to go for just subs and still try and get... Go for, try and go for the Nighthawk and play for that. You know, I understand that, but um, they are more expensive and they're going to take longer to build. You know, you're talking two weeks each for a good Nighthawk. Spectre is still a really useful sub, especially for basic things like decoying in, in drag bases and mission targets. I know a lot of people still do hit lower mission targets in bases as well. Um, a, a lot of times a Spectre decoy could really make a difference when you've got new enforcers, assuming there's no gargoyles that, on top of you. Um, <laughs> as well as, you know, ranking even. Just a quick ship to yep. help you rank on oil. Yep. yep, I have one with a Reaver Scout Engine to help me uh, decoy and rank. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. I mean, even if you just pick it up just to make a couple of um, bare hulls, really, um, with the really scout engine on them just for helping you out yeah, um, well, I mean, doing some ranking. It doesn't weigh. I mean, it, it doesn't weigh a lot. So if you uh, if you build, like, the, 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 I'm spitting my words together, the deco I used to use in bases and stuff, uh, I actually didn't have Reaver Engine on because it weighed more. I just had Engine 3, Battery 3, and Havoc Torpedo 1. That's just under two days to build in completion. Yep. Yep. Uh, and we okay. know from last time, uh, the last raid, I was actually using Spectre decoys to do the 65 targets. Mm, and that's it, wait, out. 25 tons, that, that build is what I said. Uh, but if you add Scout Engine, it's 888. So you have to bear that in mind with your build. Yeah, agreed. It depends on what you want it for, really. Um, it's up to you. You need the extra speed, then. Yeah, but I mean, I think overall the point I'm trying to say is, if you don't have it, get it. It's only cheap. Yeah. Yep. Um, next on my list, I put the Light Cruiser X. Um, really cheap. Uh, you know, I mean, high-end players aren't really going to need that. But um, if you're looking for something for instant repair or quick build, or you're, you know, you're a low-level player, that's just something you want to go after this raid. Um, some LCX, and you know, if you put the new um, Harrier missiles on it, of course that's a seven and a half million, so maybe a little bit out of reach for a new player. But um, strike missiles, strike missile bees are in. Is it tier two in the mission? Uh, tier two or three, quite obtainable for lower level. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just the old strike missiles, even the blueprint strike missiles, aren't bad with it. So, um. It's it's a nice ship if you know for for new players. Um, yeah, less than a day to build as well. Even with strike missile bees, it's uh, yeah. without any special. It's eighteen hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice change from battle cruisers at least. Um, and then I I threw the nuke cruiser and the dread X and the triton on there. Um, they're you know low point targets and they're moderately effective in certain places. Although, you know, with a Rhino taking two days to build the hull, um, it, it's tough to say, wow, spend spend a lot more time on these less capable hulls. I'm disappointed there's no thing. there's no original dread. Especially because they pumped some decent life into it with R ten. You would think in a yeah. hull store, something that's recently been put to our in fact I think it was the last group of retrofits actually. Um yeah, one before that. What was it? Well it, it either way it's quite it's quite recent in the scale of things, so it's a shame that that's not there. I think that should yeah. be there. I love, you them. I, I love them, yeah. I've yeah. got obelisks of mine and um, some disruptor cannons. 
I don't and see the, why they, they, why they wouldn't be there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I'll talk about tier three. Uh, there's some decent hulls in there. You know, you got your jug X, which you can make with really high evade. Get uh, it. They're really useful at R5. I'm gonna say that now because I've I've made a few posts where I've used a jug X decoy, and the amount of people that say, "Well, what if you don't have a jug X?" Well, here's your answer: get it immediately in the raid. Well, not immediately. Obviously, work out your points, but strive to get the jug X if you're struggling with missions or dredges even, um, and you haven't got an awful lot of capability of getting points. The jug X is a really good ship. Um, I know someone who's got obelisks on them, and it works really well for him because he doesn't have crusaders. And he does the yeah. same things that I do, just a little bit slower and a little bit less uh, damage, but he gets there eventually. Yeah, yeah. They're ni they'd be nice with the new launchers as well. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Viper um, is available, so that one's uh, worth getting if you need some sub defense. Enforcer. Only one Viper is probably needed. If you uh, you can put a lot of thermal in it. In oh sorry, sonar. I think it's one of the highest sonar ships you can get. Um, yeah, but we'll need 134, I think. Yeah. No, 100, well, it's 132 without retro. Once you start retroing yeah. the, the D4P, you get a bit more. But I think if you wanted a sub-killing fleet, I would probably say V2H, even though it's got less thermal. Fantastic. If yeah. you've got a Frosty as well, it, which we'll get to in a bit, then I think a Viper's almost... I wouldn't say extinct. I was having a conversation... Well, we, we was talking with Tyler on one of the pages earlier. He was suggesting not to get it, but I think, you know, consider at least getting one if you have the points. Because remember, yeah. if you're only using sonar for sub defense, that will not spot subs, decent subs. You need to burn just one. However, the Viper is very. Well, it's something that you really need if you want to combat Reapers. Um, either a Viper or a Frostburn, really. Because you need that high sonar range on that. And, for, and the next one, Enforcer, is huge. You haven't got it. Right, yeah. So, Enforcer, um, really high priority, if, especially if you have the U Launcher, uh, the new U Launcher. Uh, you want that in your base. Um, and then I threw some other holes on there Nighthawk, Kodiak, Mastodon. Uh, again, decent choices, but um, you know, long builds compared to the new stuff. Um, especially, you know, if you can get the points for a rhino, ignore the mastodon. Um, I'll tell you that. Shield lip front three as well. Shield lip front three as well. It's huge. Especially right. with the new uh, with the new Bobasis. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 But that night, no, he hasn't been out for a while. Has it been out for over 18 months? I think it's 19 and 19 months this raid. Not like I've been Still counting or anything, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stuart Lipton has been out in 19 months, so, you know, it's, it doesn't come out very often. Yep. And for, and for defense, it's, that's huge. If you don't have, so, if you don't have pin resistance, and then you'll, you know, and you flee. Um, I, you know, I still like V2Cs and V2Hs. I, I never built a V2C. I, I've. I, I think you can build some nice V2C fleets. It's just never been my top priority. Um, new launchers, again, great build for those. Uh, V2H, I trot mine out sometimes. Kind of useful. I like mine. Although the Artemis does kind of obsolete the V2H if you got some no, of those. I know me and Payne both put Delusion on our uh, V2Hs. Yeah, that's really useful. Great. I'm going to quickly say something about the Enforcer, and this is almost crazy talk. But at 6.5 mil, it's a considerable amount if you're striving to get a lot of ships, um, or if you can't really gain a lot of points. Um, I'm just thinking, they mentioned about a campaign that's coming in after the raid the next week with a new defense ship, didn't they? So They did. It's almost like, well, I don't want to say don't get the Enforcer, but if you're really struggling for, for getting a ship and you can only really get one or two, even if you've got the launcher, maybe it's worth considering... Um, something else. Well, it, I suppose it depends on how much you coin, I suppose, and what your fleet's like, because I would imagine the new campaign will be quite tough. But just bear in mind that there is a new ship coming. We don't know what it is yet. could be something completely irrelevant to launchers. But I, I, I don't know. The way kicks I've been historically, I imagine uh, if, I, if I would 
spent money on it, I would say there's a new launcher guard ship. Not that, you know, it's nothing official, that's just me being spectacle, skeptical even. But <laughs> it's, it's speculative. Worth, speculative, yeah. It's, it's worth having that thought in your mind when you're making decisions on what to get, depending on how many points you can get. If you can only get one ship, maybe the Enforcer isn't for you and you should probably get a ship to help you get more ships. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for something to use the new launcher on, you know, again, that V2C. Great choice. Obviously, if you're looking for, if you're looking for base defense, and obviously the Enforcer. Right. Right. But, I mean, building ships to go out and kill stuff is a lot more fun than building ships for base defense. Yeah, That's I mean, I know my opinion. the Enforcer at the moment is obviously top of the game. It's like people get scared to hit a base if it's got an Enforcer. I had someone try to re me, failed, and just refused to come back because I had an Enforcer. Um, like but that's not that's days. not going to last forever. At some point, I mean, look at when all these ships have come out in the past. Eventually, it's like I mean, look when the Enforcer first came out. It was it was immense and it killed loads of fleets. And then suddenly, I see an Enforcer in a base, and I'm like, I don't need to worry about that. You know, when you peek a base. To be honest, I think, that's what, the new, I think that's what the new Rhino will be. To be honest. Well, that's, I mean, we do, it, how long until the Enforcer is irrelevant again? That's what I'm trying to say. And you, you can't really put a guess on this. I mean, you can make an educated guess based on historic, you know, how long ships have lasted, but if you're not able to coin and, and keep up, up to date on a regular basis, you know, the enforcer might not be for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Again, absolutely right. If, you, if you're struggling in a raid and you pick up the enforcer, that's not going to help you much for the next raid or the raid after that. Yeah, we've got a new raid coming, so we don't know if, if an enforcer, I mean, the last couple of raids, enforcers have actually been really useful, but I would imagine that whatever is useful now is probably not going to be useful in the next tier of raids. Yeah. You tend to find that, and it's always been pretty much the same way that um, tech that you, you know, the new tech that you pick up in in the raid sets is always going to be the best stuff to start off with in the next raid set. So yeah. So someone's pointed out, you know, 103.4 range should be relevant for a decent amount of time, and you know, I couldn't agree more. That is, you know, it's a good and good evaluation. But, and I'm certainly not saying the Enforcer is bad. You know, it's probably one of the best ships out there at the moment, in general, not just for guards, but you know, I use mine for sniping. Um, I've seen people use them in raids. I also use it in the mission. It's a really useful ship. I'm just saying overall, if that's the only thing you can get, you want to reconsider maybe. Okay. Alright, and I, I threw speed 3 on here, 2 million points. Um, if you have been super unlucky and haven't gotten in, in the Forsaken mission yet, you might want to knock that out. Yeah, it's like, like we always say, um, you know, if you can pick it up and you've got extra points and you can pick it up, it's one thing out of the list that you're uh, not going to pick it pick out in your uh, Forsaken mission. So, yep. get it done. And then let's not forget our 5 million point skin store. So you can refresh your skin. <laughs> or you can tell Kixai, give me some skin. Did one for the ladies this time. Iggy Pop, come on. Iggy Pop, right? <laughs> we, know, we know Larry's man crush is now. <laughs> Come on, it's a classic punk. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I bet Snowman didn't get a bone from that one. <laughs> All right. So uh, more highlights. Uh, tier five. Uh, again, the new stuff: Rhino and and the Borba's Gore, Gore Saber. Um, tier four: the new Harrier missile. Um, fantastic. Crusaders priced at 10 million. Um, Crusaders fantastically useful uh, these days. And Harlock's Atlas for eight. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a little torn on those. I, I think they're not as useful open water as they used to be, but um, certainly you see really a lot. useful in God. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, think there's a better choice of UAV ship in defense at the moment. I, I would always yeah. advise the Harlock over. You know, the Valkyrie or the Warbird. And the Nash. That's just irrelevant, I think. Higher defenses. 
Yeah, and yeah. the Locust, I, um, I don't know, I'm cautious about time, so I won't bang on, but also, again, me and uh, Tyler were talking about this. He was suggesting that it's not really a useful ship. Um, again, I'm going to disagree and say if you just get one for your guard, um, an Enforce on an Atlas combo is really hard to defend against from an attacker's perspective because you've got to get you know possibly countermeasures there, uh, a high explosive defense. Especially if you got, you've got the radiation the the Yeah, yeah I mean, if this is uh, the base is position where they've got to hit both at the same time. Yeah, they're two polar opposites, the Enforcer and the Atlas, from you know the evade perspective, the damage perspective, uh, the way that you can shoot one down and not the other. You've got two things to defend against there which are quite opposites, and it's a really challenging thing to do, and most fleets either are one or the other, or they're really weak in general. So it's a really good thing to do to, to stop a, an average fleet is to mix the Don't make, don't make your base a one opponent. Yeah, I mean, the best type of defense is, is mixing offense, right? You know, different types of damage output. Yeah. Yep. You can't defend against everything to a high level. So, you know, if you mix it up, <clears throat> you're obviously going to have a better chance of stopping the majority. Okay. Crusaders. Uh, that Crusader is huge, though. Anyone that can get, the, they can get that them points and didn't get the first time get the crusader well yeah and uh, let me let me let's go through the sector store and then um you know i think we need to talk about what each player needs to think about because you know the crusader is great but if you don't have the arbalest for it it might not be so great so um Let's talk about the sector store. You've got um, the frost burn, which is cheaper than it's ever been, fifteen million. Really good value, though, I think. Yep, yep. I've already got my two. Um, but uh, the Aegis kicks. I uh, uh, did answer my prayers, and the Aegis is there for twenty-five million. I'm disappointed um, with only one. I want it. I, I I'd like them have had to have a two. You know, one for defense, one. Ah, you should have done the arena. I stopped moaning. Some people yeah, have yeah, and, and uh, right. And you know, I, wa I wanted an Aegis for myself, but um, you know, the fact is, it, it it came out in the arena as a prize not too long ago. So, um, the people who want them in the arena still have that advantage that they can yeah. build more. I mean, one. I'm grateful for the one, to be honest. So. Yeah, me too. Uh, Grimshine Berserker and Highlander Nude Cruiser are both eight million. Uh, they have their uses in in various situations. Grimson Highlanders is amazing. Just that that thirty percent defense is I don't think has ever been more important than at the moment in the game. The thirty percent of all defense in overload plus combat speed is really useful, especially heavy epoch morts and stuff. Yep. Yep. Grim Grim Zerk might be another really nice rhino spotter. Really cheap as well, I think, at eight mil. Yep. Yep. Highlander's best built empty, but again, eight million is a pretty good value. Fifty percent radioactive defense. And that's not been out for a long time. Yeah. Huge for base defense as well. And then, you know, I, you know, from most of the other tiers I picked and chose, I, I couldn't, you know, leave out any of these flagships because they're all really special in their own way. So you've got the Omega, great on defense. Um, you got the Grim Wrath. Um, a lot of people love the Grim Wrath. Thirty million, a little expensive, but very, very useful ship. I think the price is appropriate. I know it's a lot, and obviously, ideally, I'd want everything to be cheap. But realistically, that's an appropriate price for what you get. Agreed. Uh, Unshackled Hellhound, Dante's uh, Nova Storm. Um, you know they're useful if if you're if you're earning twenty million points and you're you're looking at a flagship. You know, I, I think you know what you're doing, right? I mean, if you have a build, a use in mind for these, then go ahead and get them. But don't just Get them for funsies. I I the, only, the, only you two, the only one there that I wouldn't really say is that effective is Dante's. It's got its uses with the speed up. You know, all the morts and stuff that you get now landing in the force of boom booms. As I but if you're looking at if you're looking at building like a Dante's or an Jack or whatever, you know, you're even coin or you know, you're not you're not worried about being able to get points. See, my my theory on it at the moment is if you've got a fleet like a hound fleet or something that you're thinking about, do I want to use a Dante or an Unshackled? Unshackled is it wins in top trumps every time. 
Um, I think it's got slightly better stats for evade and stuff. Obviously, the radiation flagship is immense. So if you're looking for a fleet, I know a lot of people struggle with the new enforcers. And if you're looking to kind of freshen up your Hound fleet or something, uh, and you don't have it yet, you need the Unshackled Hound, really. It's a really good decoy. Um, it's not like the Highlander where you just leave it outside. You can run it into the base. Um, and, you know, if you have an Unshackled and four Hounds with the new launcher on, you get the uh, the extra special overload, or what, I don't know what it's called. Um, it's um, the Alpha Strike, isn't it? Yeah. The extra special Alpha, so, alpha yeah, Strike. I mean, 100, 100 range Alpha Strike. That Unshackled Hound is is really important in the game if you want to hit enforcer bases, really. Mm. It adds to your extra speed as well when you're, when you're in your overload as well. When you're in overload with all five ships, you get a, an even greater increase in speed. Yeah, so unshackled, if you can get 20 million and you're unsure what to get, um, I'd say that is actually a really good value ship. Okay. Good stuff. And then, uh, you know, again, I didn't want to leave any of them out because they're all special in their own way. You got the Savage Kodiak for 10 million. Um, you know, that missile uh, boost might be something you want to use with rhinos, maybe. Savage is amazing in the Forsaken mission as well. Yeah. Um, guns. Combined with the ages. Yep. Yep. You would need to put it blank to get the reload. So there you have it. Uh, that's a rundown of the prizes. And that is the last slide. Yeah. I, th I think if you're, oh. having that, if you're going to have that many points left over, though, I think definitely the first thing you should do is to get ages if you haven't got it. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I think um, Aegis would probably be, if you haven't got one, uh, top of my priority list, really. Yeah, yeah. the Aegis even, kind even of... Over, even over the Frosty, if you're, if you're between a thermal shift that you want and you want either a Frosty, a frosty or an Aegis, then just go for the Aegis. Well, if you if you really need a Frosty or an Aegis, the, the chances are you're wanting it for Wendigos, uh, you know, putting out the fire and ice. So... Out of the two, I'd definitely say an Aegis, just because one, you know, the defense bonus you get to your fleet um, is is just too good to miss if you had the choice of the two. Uh, well, the thing with the it is that you can harness uh, re resonance battery from the Aegis as well. I'm not sure if you can with the Frostburn. No. Uh, one thing I will say as well is it's not a flagship either over the yeah. Frostburn, so you can actually use a Frostburn and an Aegis or a Grimshine, Grimshine's Wrath. Um, unshackled. Uh, unshackled, you can use them in conjunction, so you know it's more versatile in that sense as well. Yeah. All right, I think you know, we've gone quite a bit over tonight. We have. It was worth it. There was a lot to get through and a lot of good advice, I think. There. Agreed. Um, so, have we got anything else we want to quickly go through, or? All done. Um, I think we'll spare the viewers so they can, uh, you know, we're almost at movie length here, feature film. So they can go and private the <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Payne, we're going to be doing a show on the, your surveys in the next yeah, couple of days. Um, I would have liked to have had it done by now, um, but we haven't forgot. Uh, there's a lot of data to get through, so I'm working through that. Um you know, where over 2,000 people have, have responded. So I want to make sure we don't miss anything and everything's taken into consideration with the responses and we have a thorough look through and then we'll put it together on a show. Um, not sure when yet, so I don't want to say a day. I'm hoping maybe one night in the raid if we can get, you know, an hour or two let our fleets repair and put up a show. So we'll, we'll post it on the page anyway. Yep, so look out for that. Uh, Larry, you're going to be posting your article... In the next couple of days. Yeah, I'm working on the um, the prize a little more detail on the prizes right now, and then um, I'll do a you know what to get uh, article soon. Um, I'm not going to do much more than that. I got a lot of personal stuff, good events, but uh, going to be very busy this uh, weekend and early next week. So I'm just hoping uh, to have enough time to do the raid. So um, my my usual coverage is going to be a little bit more limited this time. So, a couple of quick points as well. Um, confirmation, in case anyone's unsure, it is a six-day event, and it is unlimited in the sense you can claim as many prizes as you want. There's no cap on any tiers. 
Yeah. Besides the limit. I think the only thing I'm good about is not having the Phantom there. <laughs> I want a second Phantom. You've had I'm plenty of chances. You've had two chances to get a second. Quit moaning. <laughs> you really want a second Phantom? Yeah, I want my Reapers. Mm. One for my Reapers. All right. I got a, I got a blank Rimshine Wrath with my Reapers. Loaded with bulk armor. Okay. Right. Um, so thank you very much for coming out and um, listening to us waffle on about everything. Um, as usual, we'd be doing a show over the weekend for uh, for the community to go through some trips and tip, uh, tips and tricks that we found On during Friday. the raid. Um, so that'll be Friday, usual time. I'll probably pump out a few raid videos and tips and stuff by then, like usual. Yep, so we'll do that and keep you posted. Um, don't forget to check out Larry's blog. What's your blog, Larry? bpprof.blogspot.com uh, don't forget to check out the Battle Pirates Crib page, facebook.com forward slash the Battle Pirates Crib. And don't forget Google. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, alphabet. Alphabet, no, yeah. <laughs> so, thanks for coming, guys. Um, hope you learnt a lot of stuff. And uh, we shall see you during the week. Adios. See you later. Adios. Yeah.